Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and I'm delighted to be bringing you an early look at a game about to be released, or depending on when you're watching this, has just been released into early access. It's Of Life and Land. You may think to yourself, hang on, we've seen this before somewhere. You'd be right. Yeah, back in summer 2023, I put up a couple of videos of an early playtest build of this, an alpha build of a game which was at that point called Circle of Kazovan. They, they, they've obviously got the Kazovan apparently has some significance to the developer, the Marco Burry, I believe his name is, who started this whole project off as a solo developer and has along the way gained a team of half a dozen or so talented individuals who have brought his vision to life and on April the 2nd, 2024, to early access here on Steam. Well, yes, it was called Circle of Kazovan. I joined the Kickstarter back in the summer of 2023 and got to play an alpha test of the game then. And I have to say thank you so much to the marketing team of Kazovan, uh, who offered me a chance to get early access to the early access release so I can play with it a little bit a few days ahead of the official launch and share what I'm seeing with you. It's a charming settlement building strategy game with a rich simulation experience. Every animal and plant tries to find their place in nature as I lead our villagers to their future. And we have to expand to different regions and trade with local factions and gather obviously needed resources. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's not simply build a base, Expand is not the 4x, expand, conquer, dominate, you know, become the warlord of the entire world. It's a much more sympathetic or potentially sympathetic game playing within the environment you land. So what we're going to build our economy, we're going to acquire and distribute, refine resources. But we also have to bear in mind we're caring not just for our own citizens but also the land and all the animals on the land because they'll be looking for food they'll get thirsty they'll need places to sleep and so on we will have to make choices along the way do we support do we live in empathy with nature or do we say well actually we don't need the foxes and the rabbits and the fish in the rivers we can do without them and sort of dominate and, well, just destroy the world, really. So it belongs to us and only us. Whether we, It's up to us whether we find that balance or not. The game is still very much in early access. Uh, on the Steam page, if you go to that, I'll, there'll be a link to that, obviously, in the description below. They do think they could be a few years in early access. There's a lot more they want to add to this. Although, as you'll see in a moment, there's already a great deal to play with. So this is the main screen. I've actually skipped past some of the lore. There is a sort of contextual thing going on behind this about how our empire has sort of destroyed the world. There's no room for anyone. It's a bit of a desperate existence. But this is one perfect spot somewhere which we've been asked to tend and nurture and hopefully give us a, a brighter, more sympathetic future to our lovely people. Whether we do that or not, of course, is another matter entirely. But anyway, here we are. This is the continue. This is the new game. Uh, this is the loading an old game. Uh, we will see an icon, which is a down arrow for saving games. Options. Loads of options already in terms of display, camera movement, graphics, quality, sound. Well, one point I make here is that uh, I'm not playing with a full array of music that's in the game. Uh, because I, I plan to monetize this video. I'm afraid, unfortunately, because that, that's what we do as content creators. Uh, so I've turned on the streamer mode, as you can see here. So I am you're only listening to a small selection of the available music in the game. If you're one of those players who like to play with the game music turned on. Uh, we can control our keyboard mapping. We've got various languages, tutorials, uh, theft notifications, show pass. We can change most of this, if not all of this, when we're in the game anyway, so I won't worry too much about that. We can integrate with Twitch. I don't do Twitch at the moment, so whatever. Mods. There is already Steam Workshop support, I believe, but there's nothing much on there apart from an example mod put up there by one of the developers. Uh, but you are free 
by going into the map editor to create your own maps and share them with friends. Yeah. I've not played with that yet, so I'm not quite sure how that works. So obviously I'm not going to, unfortunately going to be showing that off to you right now. We're going to be playing with the basic map, which is called Kurzovan. Uh, so we're not going to exit. We're going to start a brand new game. We're going to start in Kurzovan. Uh, so Eliana of Kurzovan has been commissioned by the king to develop... Eliana, is that me? <laughs> to develop the almost uninhabited north. Ah, I am her executive hand. Ooh, the Queen's Hand. And manage the newly founded settlement. Your task is to ensure that a place is created that is worth living in. We start with ten settlers on a balanced map. Good to know. So, um, yeah, let's start in Kazovan. Hello, hello. This is Ilian, our, uh, our champion. Uh, good that we're here. That's nice to know. This is a lovely hand-drawn map. Uh, because they have an important task for us. The situation in the, em in the southern part of the empire is steadily worsening, worsening due to rapid population growth. It gets more and more difficult for the common people. Farms are smaller. Taxes remain the same or increase. I think we're all kind of familiar with this scenario, aren't we? New land can only be gained to a limited extent by clearing or developing less optimal areas. Yeah, there's, there's no room for descendants. There's no inheritance. Probably a good thing too, to be honest, but that's a personal view. <laughs> we are Kazovan, one of the largest estates in the Empire. We still do not have large cities and productive villages, and are therefore insignificant. Ah, right, so Eliane is presumably the head of the Kazovan, the northern part of our Empire here. I send you north. Explore. Be wise. See that the people lack nothing, and the new settlers will join you. And if you are open and decent, well, that's very much me... Uh, and uh, to them and their customers, they will stay. So that, that's where we're going, apparently. I build a community centre to consolidate, uh, but also take care of your supplies because the summer is quickly over. Good luck. They're counting on us. And here we are. We're going to use the space bar to pause. So this is our map. We've got the help and tips coming up there, but I can bring them back at any point by clicking the little help icon over there. Can I click it off? I can click it off. We've got some quests to do to start with, but this is where we are. Some lovely movement around and yeah, the sunlight is striking those mountains very dramatically. That is lovely. We've got water. We've got settlers coming in. They've Stefan. Hi, Stefan. Uh, you're you're uh, 23. Yeah, you you live in nature. That's lovely. Uh, you have needs, apparently. Uh, I need some rags to withstand the cold and hot climate. Yeah, we don't have any clothing options yet. We'll have to build those. Otherwise, their needs are fairly modest. The effects. Uh, okay, they have a mating season, apparently, which runs from January through to December. I imagine different animals. Can we spot different animals? Oh, there's sheep. Let's go over there. Hello, sheep. Uh, so all the individual animals... Oh, there's a rabbit as well. Oh, it's a hare, not a rabbit. They are individually simulated. Oh, so they mate between January... And... Oh, right. So I'm going to assume the gold bar is when they can mate. So hares have a much shorter mating season than sheeps and people. Whatever that tells us. Yeah, so this is... Does this sheep have a name? They don't. Oh. Uh, they are in a group... They're just, they're, they're not the leader of this little gang of sheeps. Uh, so they have needs. They, oh, they have lots of needs. They don't want to get killed. Well, I'll try and not do that. Yeah, if I can. Anyway, what we need to do, we need to set up somewhere nice for our people to live. And we are guided because I've turned the tutorial on. Open the building menu, which is down here. I think I can press B if I'm so inclined, but I'm not going to. And we need to set up a... Uh, rotate build, oh, we'll do that. We're going to place a forester's stump. So that is you. So there you go. Uh, build. Oh, hang on. Buildings have different entries and exits. The white, different entrances and exits. The white arrows show where these are. That's nice. Uh, rotate the building with the R key. That's lovely. So we're going to place this here, are we? Uh, I want to tick this off. Ah, if I rotate that, 
ticks that off. Aha! Right, once you have selected a building, a preview and various black, green or orange dots appear. Black means there is nothing useful on the field. So useful to this forest of stumps. There are no trees in these black spotted squares. Green means there is something useful. Okay, and orange indicates there is something but something there but nothing as useful as a green dot. Okay, so let's get it back. Um, yeah, I mean for a forester stump, as we'll see in a moment, most things are either useful or not useful at all. We'll place this. Where should we place this? Uh, I'll place it there, I think. Have we got enough trees? I think we can get... Uh, yeah, that, that, that... No, we'll place it here, I think. So we'll get a few, a couple more trees in uh, in view. So we'll place that there. Lovely. And our settlers will hopefully rush off to start building that. Uh, at the top here we've got our speed gauge. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three hundred times. Uh, they've already built it. Gush. <laughs> So that is there. Now on the forest of stump, if we click this, activities, we can define all our sort of productive buildings, what they can do. Uh, so here we are cutting down trees, wearing high heels. Sorry, a, a strange reference. Uh, you may recognise that if you're a person of age or a person who appreciates old culture, British culture at least anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so we're cutting down trees, we can either disable that or change the order in which they do things. We've got these numbers here. We can collect branches and collect mushrooms. Uh, employees, Matilda, you're coming to do that and we can upgrade our buildings. We're not going to do that just yet, we'll leave them as basic because upgrading buildings takes resources and we need to spend our resources building stuff that is useful. Now, we've got our forester stump here, we've got a small food camp, well, a various food crates here to keep us going through the spring and summer. We're in season summer. It's not telling me what the seasons are there, but that's, that's I'm not going to worry too much about that. We're in year one. It's one minute past two, apparently. Uh, we need to gather a shack. And a gather a shack is our next thing, uh, which is... Gather a shack, and that stores gathered goods and tools. And that will cost us 20 branches and 20 logs, raw wood, to build. Uh, if I click on that, it'll let me place it. Again, uh, we've got lots of green dots. We've got, what's that behind us? If I right click, that is wild wheat. Grass. Grass, fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. This is quite a good place, I think, for a gathering hut. Yeah. Do I want to place you there? Yeah, we'll place you. Well, do I want to put, if I place you, because what we could do is put, we could put a road in. Roads are useful because it means people can move around more quickly. So we'll, I'll put roads in fairly soon, I think. I think, actually, yeah. We don't want to waste it by sort of going up there too much, up here, because that just takes time getting up the hill. So, running up that hill. So I shall place you there, I think. Then we get some stuff over here as well. So that's the gatherer shack, so we'll have our guys building that. Let's move on a bit faster. So they're going to put that there, and they're going to build that. We can change the priority of the buildings that we've got scheduled. So we've got this delivered. So we're still waiting for eight more branches to be built. Okay, we're also going to want a garden bed, which is basically a sort of vegetable plot, I suppose. So press B, that's that. Is that going to be here? Plants and fields, conifers, garden bed, there we are. If we take care of the garden, we'll get lots of root berries and some grass. Okay, so we'll build some of that. Uh, click on it. There you are. And, ooh, they're, they're obviously picking up the grass or berries, whatever they're doing there. Uh, we'll put this, I think, all along here. How many of these do we want? We'll just have three of them, I think. There you go. Oh, not, I didn't build that last one. Oh, two of them will do for now, then. 
Actually, I'm not sure I want that one. Can I remove that? What's that? Deconstruct targets. Deconstruct that. That's fine, yeah. So what I want, I'll build that over here, because I think I want a road to go down. Yeah, we'll have a road going down there. So we'll put that garden bed, actually, there. There you go. Ah, we've got the gatherer shack. We've got the garden bed. We need a simple stone mason because we will want stone. Uh, how do I know what I've got already? Uh, I've got these icons at the top here, which is my sort of resources. Uh, this is the fodder or food. So I've got a hundred mushrooms and bread and bark and roots, fruits, vegetables, uh, fodder. Uh, that's raw meat. Not quite sure what the difference is between fodder and food, but whatever. Yep, and this is drinks, yes, and materials. We've got ten logs. Is that all? And no clothes or other equipment. Now, one thing, uh, I don't know if you, if I, I haven't been watching for it, but one thing that does happen is our food here is raided. Oh, yes, there it is. It's happened. A European hare has stolen from the food crate. So what I'm tempted to do is fence this off to protect my my food su supply, really. I mean, we're gathering food anyway, which should be enough. But if we go to the build menu, and we've got fences here. Uh, so I can build a weir, a high wooden fence, which requires, ooh, just one branch, a high wooden gate, a stone fence, which requires stone, which I don't think we have at the moment. Actually... Ah, now it does say here, the high wooden gate keeps big, anim keeps big animals on one side. So the little cr critters like the, the hares, I still want to call them rabbits. I like rabbits. <laughs> it, won't let, it won't keep them out. We'll need to build stone to keep those out. Uh, but it will keep things, I, I'm not sure about foxes, it might keep foxes out and the like. But it keep things like deer and sheep out. So we could build fences that don't require much to do, do they? Okay, let's let's do that. So, if I rotate this, can I put you, if I put you there, can I, can I put you there? Actually, I want to, no, we'll do, do it like that. And, ooh, and drag it around here like this. And rotate it again. And then along there. Yeah. And. Oh, no, don't want that. No, destroy that. Oh, it's not built it. Good, good, good. That was me being silly. I want a. F Actually, boom. No, we'll put the fence like that, I think. And then up there, and up there. And we can put a gate. A gate in there, across the road. That shouldn't take too much to build. Oh, they're, they're getting cold, you see. Always oh, taking food. Ah, is he gonna, where's he going to take that food? Hang, hang on, hang on, he's going too fast. Where's he going to take that? He's delivering items. Oh, you're going to put it in the gather... Oh, he's planting it! Lovely! Roots and sprouts. I like some sprouts. Right, I've been tasked by the, the quest master to build a stone mason, so we need to find some stone, which is up here. Uh, so build. Uh, this is a stone mason, a simple stone mason. And the arrows indicate the entrances. I think. Yeah, there's not much else stone apart from here and here. So. We could place it. We could place it there, and that will get everything in as well without them having to walk too far. So I'll place that there, and actually build a little bit of a road, right there. That's it. The thing is, of course, roads do take resources and time to build. So I don't want to get too carried away, which I often do when I play games like this, building roads early. Because that just takes time away from building more useful things like shelter, which we'll be building in a moment. We'll get that. We'll follow the quests here. It's six o'clock in the morning, and they're already awake. 
Well, they're much better at mornings than I am, let me tell you that. So they are completing this fenced area here, which should keep the large animals out. So reduce the, the decay in our food supply. As, while we sort of start growing and gathering our own. Oh, look! Oh! Red deer. Another red deer. A young red deer. I suppose the number in brackets is their age. Age four. Age two. Oh! That is so cute! Well, if I'm right... Yes, F10 hides the UI, so I can take lovely screenshots. That's not a bad little shot, is it? There we go. F10, and it's brought back. Carry on. As you were. And lo, the stonemason has been built. And all the, why, are they, why are they carrying wood up there? So they, they're store, it's storing, storing wood. Like, I'm sure that's just a temporary reason. Yep. And uh, it's going to be Hewing Stones. Okay. Oh, we can change the name of our settlement. Which is nice. So it's currently called Valley. And do you know what I'm going to call it? A Jaxima. Because it has to be called that. That's lovely. The Faction Overview. So we're going to click on that. So this is our people. We're not going to be worrying about other factions or anything else like that for, for a little while yet. Uh, what do we have in storage? Uh, we have oh we have quite a few fruits and vegetables. We actually have some bread. Oh, lovely! Uh, our population of our settlement area of our little Kozovan Ajaxima Ajaxima <laughs> settlement, and we have all these buildings, and they're doing oh upgrades. You can up we'll we'll look at upgrades later, obviously, when we have the need or the resources to do that. Okay, the next thing we do need to do is find some places for people to live in. So let's go build again. This is going to be under community. Uh, we'll build a campfire and streets at some point. Well, you've already seen me build a bit of a street. Uh, so we're going to build straw huts. Well, actually, what I want to do, I'm going to actually... No, I am going to put down a little bit of road. So I know where my, my shacks, my huts, my lovely buildings are going to go so we've got a road coming out of there we've got a garden bed there I think a little bit of a road along here will do nicely yep and then perhaps going up there good so we're gonna place our houses our initial houses are gonna be along here I think let's build these straw huts like like we're being asked to by the quest master so this requires actually quite a lot of grass and ten branches or so. So it can take eight. Let's let's click on it. There you go. Now on some buildings like straw huts, you have a variety of designs to choose from. By hitting the tab key, we can scroll between them. There you are. Now I think if I remember correctly, if I place one. The next one I place will have a slightly different design. So let's place another one. And then another one. And they've all got... Yep, yeah, they change design as you go through. Or you can manage the designs yourself by using the tab key. So you got to set about building those. Uh, that will take a little while to do. So again, I will just skip forward a touch and come back to you on the other side of a, a quick and cosy. Sexy. That's still sexy. Video effect. I have prioritised one of the straw huts by using the high priority option here. So they focus on getting the first one built so we complete this little quest we've got here. Rather than spreading it across all three. If that works. And it's getting a little bit late. As you can see, evening is drawing in. It's nearly six o'clock. Oh, and someone's fallen asleep already. Sleeps, that's Sylvia. I suppose if I haven't got up at six o'clock in the morning, they will want to sleep fairly early in the evening as well. They don't want to work, be up too late. It looks like we're all asleep. So again, I'll just skip forward a touch until they all start waking up and finish off our straw hut. I'm glad to see that our sheep and other large animals aren't raiding our stores anymore because of our little bit of fence. 
good investment, I reckon. Oh, while it's still night time, just thought I'd have interrupt my uh, <laughs> my pause to show you the lovely night sky. And obviously it's moonlit. There must be a big moon somewhere because it looks quite bright across the land here. But yeah, lovely. There's, there's, there's details like that which are very much appreciated by people like me. Oh, they should be awake. It's uh, oh no, no, they're not. It's only two o'clock in the morning. Oh, half past two. Right, be back with you again in a second. And morning has broken. It's a wet, miserable morning by the look of it. Oh, those dark, pendulous, ominous clouds and the pouring rain. Oh dear. Right, I think we do need to add more shelter and more places to warm and hide. Come on guys, let's get this, uh, this straw hut built. Each hut only houses two people. So we're going to actually need five of these. Oh, and there it is. We have our first straw hut. Lovely. And has anyone taken that yet? Oh, it's still vacant. It sleeps just two. We can upgrade these by adding a bonus sleep option. We can add comfort. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I clicked on it to give it. Or we can give them a pet. Yeah. Oh, well, never mind. We've got an upgrade coming already for that. So that's going to cost us resources on an annual maintenance basis. Uh, so our next job is firewood. And we will find that, I think, in the production option here. The simple oven. Tailoring to make rags, which is the next thing we're going to want to do. Hand mill. Sawing place. And this does products, firewood and planks. Right, so we want a soaring place. It makes sense, I suppose, to have this close to the forester stump, but also reasonably close to the gathering uh, shack. And where should we put this? We could put this here. Or there's an entrance there. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that there, I think. And also a little bit of road. There you go. So that's the soaring place. We also want a tailoring place to make rough rags. Uh, oh, go to build menu. That's where you find it. And that was, we saw that a second ago. Oh, there you go. No, it's not that. It's production. And the rudimentary tailoring table, which produces rough rags and basic clothes. And where should we put you? Well, we could put you alongside here, I suppose. Or on the other side of the road. The other side of the road. Yeah, that'd be good. Add another bit of road. Another bit of road. Again, I these, these take a while to build while we've only got the ten settlers. There's quite a few of them now have actual jobs to do. They're not just random builders of, of things. So I will skip forward for you once again and rejoin you after another sexy video effect. And we have our tailoring table. Rudimentary tailoring table ready. Uh, we just need someone to actually work there. Oh, son Sani is doing this. Uh, Sani is 19. Lovely. They're carrying stone and roots, which is fine. Which, but they probably need that to survive. They might eat raw roots. Actually, where, where, where is Sani? Uh, I should have to follow you. Follow the target. Oh, there you are. Where are you going? Go to work. You're just walking. Ugh. Now, as leader of this settlement, I suppose I really ought to tell them to get on with it. But I'm not sure I can. We don't have that much control. Now, while, uh, while I was waiting for this to build, and you enjoyed that lovely, but presumably short, sexy video effect, stop walking and get working. I've got this quest to complete. It did occur to me that it might have made more sense to build these garden beds over here in the uh, fenced off area. Because I suspect, and I think I have seen when I was preparing, doing some sort of uh, acclimation, getting used to the game, <laughs> as it were, uh, before starting the recording. I'm sure I did see some animals eating out of my garden bed, which really is not on. I might leave them there for the moment, 
But what we will do, I think, is we will actually build. I will do that. I'll build a garden bed. Just the one here in this lovely fenced off area. There you go. We'll add to that or add or move these as our needs change. Look, Sani, whatever your name was, why are you not producing rough rags for me so we can move on with this quest? It's nearly half past five and I'm sure I saw someone delivering something here. Yeah, they delivered grass. Zero. And grass is used to craft rugs. Oh, and again here at the tailoring table, uh, you can, just like the forester stump that we saw earlier, you can decide what this, this particular production does. So you can either craft rags or basic clothes which require leather or wool. Ooh, so we will start farming sheep or keeping sheep for wool as we go forward. We can't, I don't think we've got any wool or leather in stock. Uh, no, no. Ooh, we run out of grass altogether. Interesting. Uh, lots of water. Uh, materials. Planks and firewood and stone. Still no clothes. Right. Uh, I will again run this forward and we will hopefully, tomorrow now, get some rough rags out of Sani and this table. Not terribly impressed with Sani, I have to tell you that much. Oh, hang on, we've got a question mark over this. What does that mean? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I dare say it means there's nothing stored there so they can't produce anything. Actually, it just occurred to me when I pulled out from the map here that we still haven't completed <laughs> our second and third uh, straw huts. And they need a lot of grass, which is presumably why we're not getting tailoring done. So again, what I'll do is I will just uh, forward this through and I'll come back to you when we've got something produced here. Yeah. So already a balancing act. I've only just started. Right, be back with you again in but a moment. And finally, we have our three straw huts built. We still, that means that's six. We still have four people without somewhere to sleep comfortably at night. So we'll build another couple uh, uh, in a moment. But we now have, I noticed, because they've been built, we can now give grass to the tailoring table, the rudimentary tailoring table, where Sani can finally get around and do something useful, like making rags. Uh, so they've received six. I was just trying to work out here, I don't think it tells you how many you need to craft any particular item. It just tells you how many you've got in stock. Now there is a wiki for the game, and that is linked, if I remember correctly, from the main menu, from the main screen. You can go there, or you can find it from the Steam page or from Kazovan's. Uh, they still call the, the website, the team is still called Kazovan. Uh, you can find a link to that from their website. Well, I'll put a link in the description below as well, actually, just for your convenience. Uh, so you can go, so that tells you all sorts of stuff uh, in there, which can be very, very helpful and useful. Uh, useful is helpful. Uh, right, so, um, so Sani. We, they are doing the activity, fulfilling a task, so they are finally getting round to crafting some rags. Uh, one other thing I've, I'll mention here as well, which I've, I've missed out, is in addition to the settings menu, which we saw earlier, you do have control over a number of sort of gameplay uh, options directly from here. You can just about make them out here in this top right corner, there's a series of small buttons which control different visual elements basically. Uh, so if I don't want to see all these paths here, I can disable them by that and get the game running and they should disappear when I get rid of Sani. Yes, they do. So if I go back to a person, I don't see their paths anymore or indeed an animal. Uh, likewise, when you hover over someone or a creature, it gives you hints and tips and tells you a summary of what they're about. Again, you can disable that if you want by these buttons here. I like seeing that, so I'm going to leave that on. The paths, I think, is unnecessary at this point. I don't think I need that. Uh, so I'll disable that. And this uh, possibility to move the camera when the cur... This is edge scrolling. I like edge scrolling, so I'm going to leave that on. Right, we should have some rough... 
Where, where, where am I? <sighs> she started and hasn't finished. <laughs> or he. Not quite sure the gender of, of Sani. Looks for food. Uh, think I will go to sleep. It's four o... <sighs> right. Be back with you again in a second when someone has completed this task. Now, if you've made it this far through the video, then I think I should offer you some sort of reward. And that's exactly what I'm doing. The lovely people at Team Kazovan have offered me a key to offer you in a giveaway. So if you've enjoyed this, or if you think you might enjoy, whether you have or not, if you think you'll enjoy the game of, of Life and Land, and fancy a chance of winning at this very moment a free key as it enters early access, then why not enter my giveaway? It's over on Gleam, a link to which will be in the description below. Uh, I don't think I can link it directly from the video through a card or anything like that. Uh, but yes, check it out and uh, enter that. Be lovely uh, if, you, if, if you would do that. And stand the chance of winning a free key to the early access build of, of Life and Land. And I wish you all the best of luck in that. Uh, the date of uh, working at the, the draw will be held on April the 5th or 6th, the, fri the Saturday of uh, of this week of uh, the first of the launch of the game so you've got a few days in which to enter hey we have rags we oh i thought thought she had rags it's no stored goods no oh well right there i'll be back with you in a moment <laughs> We still haven't produced any rags. It's getting annoying, but I'm feeling I might have worked out what the problem is. When I upgraded this uh, straw hut here, it had a yearly cost of grass. So it needed branches and grass. So I have a feeling the grass was being diverted here to maintain that comfort in that straw hut. So I've actually destroyed that hut rebuilt it without the upgrade. I've also actually completed the other two huts. So everyone now has a home and we should be able to get some grass here. And also the wiki unfortunately didn't help me about to understand what this icon meant, but I did notice it pops up here. A little red icon here, no goods available or in range. And what we're looking for here is grass and our fodder list here shows we have no grass stored. Mm, you would have thought there's plenty of grass around but apparently that's it's not happening. So what I've also done to help that is I've added a third employee Luca to the gathering hut. So hopefully we'll gather more stuff more quickly including things like grass uh, which we've got about well, having 20 delivered at the moment by the look of it. So hopefully that will turn things around. However we do have an issue with a member of staff, Valley, or, or a settler, who is overheating. It's obviously high summer or something. I don't think it tells me the temperature. We have got heat here. If I turn that on, it is quite warm. We're down here. It's not really warm like it is up there. But yeah. So they've, they've obviously got... Oh, no, no, no. Let's. I want to show that. That's fine. Uh, I'm not sure what I can do about that at the moment. I think rags will help them sort of hide from the sun. But we need to get that worked out. Anyway, we're still waiting on our rags. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, have we delivered rags? It looks like we might have done. I, I missed... The, oh, goodness me. <laughs> um, we have no rags in store here, have we? No, is someone wearing rags? Has not freezes. Ah, is that Valley? Oh no, they, they've got an issue. That's the problem there. Uh, their needs must be renewed in time. Oh, hunger and thirst is an issue for them. They have a house. 
Arr. Can I tell who has... Oh, they need... Ah, this icon here. They need rags. Has anyone got any? No. Looks like no one's got rags at the moment. Well, I've moved on here to setting priorities. Okay, change the priority of an activity in a production building. Okay. So, let's do that. And we will move that up. There you go. So, basic clothes using leather. Don't really want that there, to be honest, but there you go. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. We'll leave it like that. We've done that now. Okay, so we need to get on to food. So we're going to build a hand mill, then a baker's oven, and then a campfire. So let's uh, quickly put those into a position. A uh, hand mill. Uh, where's that? Fishing place, gatherer shack, production. Hand mill. Okay, and what we'll do, we will place you... Thinking along here somewhere. We might want our people to go up here to sort of get these trees and berries and whatever. But hmm, this could be a sort of production zone place here. So we'll put you there. Yep. And then a simple oven, which is here. And we'll put you ooh, down here alongside the mill. That makes sense. And finally the campfire, which is a community thing. It's a place where people gather, eat and drink and tell stories and have a good time. So let's, uh, oh, you're quite large. We'll put this, I think, oh, a little bit out of the way here. All down here, where this, mm, we don't want to lose too many, too many resources, do we? We could put it here by the bridge. No, we'll put it down here, I think. E yes, we'll do that. Okay, so I will have those built. And uh, I'll come back to you once that's been done. Excellent. We have our three new buildings. So we have our hand mill, our simple oven. Is anyone working these yet? So we've got... Oh, someone has started milling grain. Vincent. He's uh, obviously taking a short break, perhaps for lunch. Our oven here. Oh, no one's working that. Uh, I think we're okay. Yeah, our, our fodder is looking much better now. So I think if I release uh, Luca from here. So we'll fire Luca from there. And he might start working at the oven. Yes, indeed he does. Excellent. So they will make bread. And there's our campfire, and people are feeling very happy, singing songs, telling stories, and maybe cooking, grilling meat. Oh, you see here, it, this progression, I think, here is telling you that things are being done. So we've got, uh, we have no firewood yet, we have plenty of meat. What's your problem? Oh, you're overheating. Too close to the fire. Well, go away then. Good. And because we've achieved all this, uh, apparently we're told that Eliane has taken off and gone somewhere to find more settlers, by the look of it. Which is excellent. So we've achieved the needs and wealth of our citizens. Can we tell that anywhere? We're still not... Are we getting needs met? No, we have got... Oh, this is the same thing, isn't it? Oh, hang on. What's Petra doing? Petra has a house. Is f eating. That's okay. Oh, they are overheating. What's going on here? Oh, this is inhumane. Oh, <laughs> What's, move away from the fire. It doesn't look like... Nobody owns any rags as yet. We've still got an issue with that. By the look of it. Oh, they are crafting ra rags. Oh, they're not... Oh, and rugs? Or oh, rags, rather, using wool. I didn't know we had any wool. No. We shouldn't. Okay. 
Oh, we have got one rag. It's been done. Excellent. Oh, we've got two rags stored. Lovely. We are getting there. Is anyone wearing rags? Not that I can tell from here, but I'm sure they will at some point. Okay, well, I think this is an ideal opportunity as Eliane is uh, is out scouring... Ooh, cows! Out scouring for more settlers to join us. We're meeting most of our basic needs, which is excellent. So I think we're doing quite well so far. And I will leave this episode here. And thank you so much for joining me for this first look at the brand new Of Life and Land Early Access release. Coming to Early Access, if it hasn't already, on the 2nd of April 2024. Don't forget, if you want to get in early, get yourself a copy of the game, then please do enter my giveaway for a free key to this game. Just go to Gleam, there's a link to that in the description below. Uh, and uh, yeah, do take part and uh, you may be in a good chance of winning. You never know. But thank you again for joining me for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Just click on the old thumbsy uppy button. Even better, if you've got any thoughts about what I'm doing with the game, or indeed the game itself, then please do drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. Other than that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these, or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Of Life and Land. Until the next time, bye bye for now.